Hello, welcome to Notes 7 Creative Engineering. Um, we always start off with a riddle. We're called Notes 7 Creative Engineering because there are only seven notes in a given musical scale. And with those seven notes, people are writing songs, 300,000 every month to the Library of Congress to be copyrighted. Uh, so there's an infinite amount of songs with just seven notes. Uh, that sort of represents the creativity that people can have uh, because we are created in God's image. That's Genesis 127. Because he's the creator, we can create. Only thing on the planet that can actually create. Create. And so therefore, that's why we call ourselves Note7.com. We're going to have an example of that here. And the whole purpose of this class is to be able to use our knowledge and our God-given gift to create things, whatever the things are, music, uh, new inventions, poetry, uh, whatever you're into, to expand your mind to create uh, uh, new things that people have never thought of before. And um, if you have any questions, comments, uh, answers to our riddles, note7school at gmail.com. Please email us. Okay. So we always start off with a riddle. Uh, this riddle is perfect to explain why we're called Note 7, because I'm going to give you a riddle. And there isn't one answer, there isn't two answers, there isn't three answers, multiple answers. And so we don't ever give the answer out in our program, but you get to email us with your answer. Uh, a lot of times we may get something that nobody's ever thought of, and that's cool. We'll post that online. Um, so this is the riddle of the day. And when I say riddle, we mean puzzle, math question. Uh, we're just using that very loosely to save, uh, give you a graphic or a problem and have you solve it. Um, of course, the premise of a riddle or a puzzle, it's never what you think. You have to stand back and get creative. And when you train your mind to not just think what we're trying to lead you, but step back and try to think of a new way, then that's where we're that's why we're doing the class okay so we have a 20-story building the assumption is all the stories may not be the same like a lot of things times the lobby down here is larger you have the penthouse so 20 stories the 20 stories doesn't matter it could be 30 stories 50 stories we have a very tall building um, so anytime in any of these I'll give you the assumptions we will have a barometer each student you guys are given a six inch handheld barometer which measures air pressure atmospheric pressure of course if you know anything about atmospheric pressure as you go up the pressure is lower or high is lower as you move down the pressure is higher of course because the lower you are the more air is pushing down all you have is that barometer that I mentioned before and this building the question is with that barometer how do you calculate the height of this building and Take a second as you're thinking about it, and we want more than one solution. And I'll tell you, we know at least four, but there's probably a lot more. So that's your challenge. Tell us how you would solve the height of that building. You're out on, let's say, I don't know, 10 a.m., nice morning, uh, and now you have to go out there physically, not just on paper. You're actually at this building, and you have to solve it. So think about it being there and how you would actually attack this 20-story building, we're calling it. Okay, that's the riddle. Now, on to a mathematical or scientific journey. A lot of times we'll give equations, we'll solve something, we tell how it's real, used in real life. This is the class where we're not really giving you any mathematical equations having you solve anything or showing how it's used in real life but I think it helps us stand back and think about things differently and when we mention the, the our five senses of course we have um, we have sight we have uh, hearing we have taste we have smell and we have touch so there's five senses okay and we all know that, but we're going to break down what those five senses are. 
And basically, I'm going to tell you anything other outside of touch, feeling, I'm not sure the other four really exist in the real world. So this is us trying to think outside the box. I'm not sure there is really any taste, any sound, any um, visual um, uh, colors or perception of sight. What did I say? Or taste. Okay, taste, sound, um, light, and smell. So we'll break them down one at a time. Um, if you could step outside of yourself for a second. So right now you have eyes and they actually take in light. They take a white light wave and break it into many colors, just like we talked about in the last lesson, a prism, if you will, and they separate those colors. When that white light hits this brown, for instance, it's actually absorbing every color except the color brown, and it bounces back. When it hits this white board, it's bouncing almost all of them back. So then the eyes, uh, uh, your eye actually has to take in that light, separate the wavelengths, and then figure out what colors it's seeing based on the reflectivity of that object. So now if you could stand outside of your eyes just for a second, nothing in this room, you could feel it, but there wouldn't be anything of any color, and color doesn't even really exist. Color is a perception that our eyes take in and then see colors because it separates the light. But out in this real world, past our eyes, let's just call everything gray. It's not even gray, that's a color. But there is no really any color. It's the perception of light. Light has no color, colors have no color. It's the sensors in our eyes that actually turn it to color. Just after I explain that principle, the others all fall into that same category. Um, sound, as we talked about last time, how the, uh, the speed of sound carries a wavelength and a multitude of information is in there. Whether it's music, chainsaw, whatever, it has frequencies built in and low frequencies of as low as 40 hertz that we can hear, high frequencies, some people can hear as high as 20 kilohertz or 20,000 hertz. It's got a bunch of information, but again, we step out, it's just waves in the air, just like light. Light is just waves. You can't see light waves outside of your eyes. You can't see sound at all, sort of the same thing, except our ears pick that up. When our ears pick that up, again, if you ever look at how complicated an ear is, it's amazing. And it takes all those different sounds that we're hearing, puts them into something that we can understand as music or a tree in the forest. Okay, good one. Um, if a tree falls in a forest, does it make a sound? Not if anybody's around to hear it, because there is no sound. Sound is only the perception of the ear. It's just waves going through the air. Until somebody hears it, it's not sound. Until somebody sees it, it's not color. Outside of that, that answers that, that riddle right there. If a tree falls in the forest, nobody's around to hear it, does it make a sound? Absolutely not. It makes waves. Okay, so then we've covered sound, we've covered sight. Let's talk about taste. Taste, your tongue actually has different sensors in it. And based on the shape of the molecule touching your tongue, it's perceived as taste. So again, a tongue is a sensor that just tastes and feels different molecules and says, hey, that's sweet. Hey, that's sour. Hey, that's bitter. But it doesn't have real taste in and of itself. It's the, the sensor that turns it into what we think is taste. Okay? Down to the last one. Smell. Okay? So... There's particles floating around. That's, if there wasn't particles floating around, like we talked about in the last lesson, lesson three, um, sound waves travel on particles. If there's no particles in a vacuum, sound waves stop. They depend on particles. Light needs no particles. So light waves would still continue. But it turns out that in the air, obviously, we've got lots of particles. And these particles sometimes 
happen to have um, a smell attached. So smell isn't a real thing either. Again, equated to the shape of the particle, it goes into our nose. Our nose then has sensors also and combines that with um, uh, the different types of smells based on the shape of molecule and we perceive that as smell. But they're molecules floating around. Food, molecules in the food. Sound, waves only. Light, waves only. None of that exists. I believe feel when somebody pushes on you you have skin sensors and it says somebody's pushing on you I think that's a real thing email me if you don't note7.com this is a completely theoretical class does it have any um, validity in real life sure I think whenever you're dealing with almost anything we deal with you have to understand perception and how things can be done um, with regards to um, the inventions you're going to use because uh, they all probably have to do with smell, taste, sound, or light. And if you get a good grasp on really what causes that, what carries it, when it travels faster, when it travels slower, when taste is better, when sound is better, when music is better, what are enjoyable sounds, what are not enjoyable sounds, enjoyable taste, not enjoyable taste, enjoyable color, you get it. That's all a real thing to us. It's real to us. I'm just saying it's not real outside of us. These things were created for our enjoyment, don't get me wrong. But it's a crazy thing outside of our sensors because nothing really exists other than physical objects and the touch of those. Okay, crazy class, I know. Weigh in. Let us know how you like. Uh, like us, note7school at gmail.com. Um, that's our email address. Note7.com is our web address. We've got uh, some music uh, that I've written, uh, an album coming out that I'm working on currently. Some of the songs are on there. We've got some different theories. Uh, but we want to hear from you. If you have some different theories and need us to post something, uh, we would read it and look forward to it. Okay. See you next time. Bye.